This command prompt should look very familiar to you. Released in 1987, which incidentally was the year of the first Rick Roll, the command prompt has not changed since. We're about to change that. In this video, you will learn how to become a Windows Terminal God. If you give me 10 minutes of your time, within this video, you will learn how to install a brand new terminal, you will learn how to run Linux natively on Windows, and you'll learn about a new type of shell that you've probably never heard of before. And it is through this new terminal that we're going to install some new themes and some new plugins, which will allow us to do some things which, if I'm honest, are just not possible in Windows. So buckle up, it's going to be one hell of a ride. Okay, so the first thing we need to do is make sure that we have Docker installed. So what we're going to do is go to our friend Google and then quickly type in Docker. From Docker, we can go to Docker Desktop. And then as you can see, we have this beautiful download for Windows. What we're going to do is then click on the stable version and Docker should download. Instead of boring you with the whole run through of Docker Desktop, what I'll quickly do is show you the setting that you need to make sure is enabled in order for WSL2 to work. So if you go into your settings, um, what you'll be able to see is in the general tab, we have something called use the WSL2 based engine. Now, as long as this is enabled, you should be able to get WSL2 working. You may also need to make sure that your virtualization setting within your motherboard is enabled. You can do this by going into your BIOS and enabling the SVN feature. The last thing we need to check is that the Windows hypervisor platform option is enabled within your Windows features. We can do this by going to search, typing in Windows turn on and off, and then scrolling down the bottom within here, and we should see the Windows hypervisor platform. Just make sure that is ticked, click OK, and that is all our prerequisites done. So the next thing we're going to do is install WSL2. So in order to install WSL2, we'll need a PowerShell terminal open. So if we quickly go down the bottom, go to our run, type in PowerShell, and then when we right click on this, remember to run as administrator. If you don't do this, some of the scripts won't work properly. Now with our prompt open, we can head over to Google, type in installing WSL2. So let's quickly install Windows Subsystem for Linux. Now the first thing we need to do is copy this PowerShell, which will enable WSL. So if we go back to our prompt, click Run, let that install. Now the next thing we need to do is make sure that we're running Windows 10 tech and that we're using the correct build, which is 19041. So if we again go to our search, type in this information check our build which is again up here and our build is 19041 so we're all set now moving on to the next part we need to copy this next PowerShell script go back in here click run see it's installing and the next thing is download the Linux kernel update package on this as we can see this install is running open up quickly and it's installed i already have mine installed so it's going to be very quick now we need to set our wsl2 as our default version again quick copy paste that is done and that is it so we should now have wsl2 configured and installed on our Windows PC. The next thing is a bit more interesting and we're going to install our Linux kernel on our PC. Okay, so what we're going to do now is quickly open the Windows Store. So again, go down to our search, do store, Windows Store, in the search at the top right here, we 
we're going to do Ubuntu. As you can see, install it. Now there are loads of different Linux distributions. This is one that I've always used. Okay, so with Ubuntu installed, click launch. Now if we go back to our command terminal. with Ubuntu started and our Windows terminal installed, we can hit launch. This should now load up our new terminal and look how beautiful that is. Now, you probably have to be fairly geeky to appreciate how much this is a vast improvement over the command prompt, but as you're watching this video, then I'm assuming you are, but let's look what we've got. So we've got this tabbing feature, which is pretty sweet. Uh, if we click this little down arrow, we can open up a brand new command prompt. I mean, look how shit that is compared to what we've got now. And if we also pick Ubuntu, we've now got a beautiful natively running Linux bash command prompt in Windows. Now this is the really cool thing. And what we're gonna do now is trick up this command prompt to have some really cool plugins and some themes. So we're gonna be productivity ninjas. Okay, so first let's start by installing Zhush. So when we go over to our terminal, we can type in apt install zhush. Do one continue. Yes, we do. And off he goes. Now to install all my zhush, which is the thing which will allow us to install the themes and the plugins, what we can do is go over to the all my zhush GitHub page, do a quick search. Um, from here, you can roll down and you can get this basic installation guide. From here, you'll be able to see that we have this curl command, which is the one that we're going to copy. Now, open up our terminal again, paste our command in, and off we go. So, we, as we can see, we're cloning the Oh My Zhush. It's asking us if we want to make Zhush our default shell. Click yes. And from this beautiful Oh My Zhush ASCII art, see that it's now all installed. So the next thing we want to do is start installing some plugins and some themes. So the first thing we're going to do is configure Zhush to have a cool new theme. Now we can do that by doing code and then in the root directory we want to open the Zhush RC file. Now this is the file which has got all the config in it. Now using code should open Visual Studio Code. Assuming that you've got the code server extension, this is a brand new PC so we're going to quickly install that and upload Visual Studio Code with our Zhush extension file. Now when we open this up, there's two lines which you really care about. This Zhush theme which is Robbie Russell and if we tab all the way to the bottom we can see this plugins. Now, this is how we're gonna install some new plugins and enable our new themes. So before installing any theme, what we're gonna do is just install these powerline fonts. Now the powerline fonts are used by a lot of the themes and if you don't have it installed, you're gonna see some weird characters within your command terminal. So just type in powerline fonts and then when we scroll down, we should have this git clone command here. Let's copy him. back to our terminal. Now that we have our fonts installed, let's quickly go back to our installation instructions. So what we're going to do is cd fonts and then do an install.sh. So cd dot dot and then we're going to do a rmrf so cd dot dot and now we've got the fonts installed and we've removed all the installation files so our command prompt can be nice and speedy
some themes are going to be a lot more easy to install than others. So let's first start with a very simple one. One that I really like is called Agnosta. So we type in Agnosta, click save, and then when we go to a new command prompt, as you can see, the old one has this turquoise user. When we click new command, you can see we've got this little lightning icon and it says root at desktop. And you know, it looks a little bit nicer than the default one. Now we're going to install a more powerful theme, the power level 10k theme. If you just do a power level 10k, and then when we scroll to the bottom, we want to install it for Oh My Jush. Again, like most things, we've got a Git clone. So we just copy this one. Go back to our terminal, paste in our command. Also have this set zhush theme power level. So in our, I want to copy that one. That's installed. Now we go back to our zhush RC. Change that for now from Agnosta to our power level 10k. So now we have the theme installed. We need to run the installer. So open up a new tab, and you should see something like this. Does this look like a diamond? No, it does not. Does this look like a knot? No. Does that look like a lot? No. Does this look like it? Yes. Pom style, let's go for the lean. Let's go for Unicode. We want all the colours, so 256 colours. We want to show a 24 hour date format. We want to have everything on one line. We want to have a sparse. I want to have concise. I want to have a transient font. Yes, I do. Amazing. I want everything verbose because everyone loves things which are verbose. And there we have it. If we click our new tab, we should be able to have a beautifully themed, elegant prompt. Now, isn't this so much better than that ugly command prompt? Okay, so one still annoying little quirk is that whenever we hit the new tab button, we get a Windows PowerShell prompt rather than a Bash shell. We're spending all this time customizing everything, so let's change that. So what we're gonna do is go to the settings tab, and then from the settings tab, what we'll see is a load of config. Now at the top, we'll have a default profile. It has this GUID in it here. If you have a look, it, as you can see, Vue Studio has highlighted that this is related to the Windows PowerShell font. What we wanna do is relate this Ubuntu one, exciting stuff. So in here, let's just highlight that one. And there we go. So if we now go back to our new tab, as you can see we have Ubuntu. Now, the other thing we haven't done yet is enabled our Powerline fonts that we installed earlier with our Ubuntu terminal. So again, scroll down to this little Ubuntu section, in font base deja vu sans mono for powerline now i'll link to all of these in the show notes so you don't need to worry about copy and pasting it too much but this will install our powerline fonts okay so another cool thing we can do is change the color scheme slightly now this is something i worked on previously but if we paste in this new schema the important thing to notice here is it's got a name called WSL and in here you can do things like set a background color, define what you want to use as black, blue and all that sort of good stuff. And again, within our Ubuntu entry, we can do this, type in color scheme and then color scheme, which is gonna be WSL because it's related to this name here. And then when we click save, in the background, you should instantly see that this turns to an eye, a nice dark blue. So now it is time to install some plugins. Okay, so let's start with a quick productivity tip. Now hopefully this tip will get you down the pub quicker on a Friday night so you can get an extra bevy in before they call our last orders. So open up a terminal, and this happens to me quite a lot. Imagine I'm in this user directory, I can't remember what other files are in here. Now typically I'd have to do an ls to see all the files, but when I'm using oh my zhush, what I have to do is a cd and a tab, 
tab, you can see that I get a list of all the folders and the files within that directory. Now, if I do another tab, I start navigating between all the different files. I can use the up and down and left and right arrow to navigate between them. And as you can see, I can quickly navigate my file system without having any memory or any knowledge of what files and folders are in each folder. Perfect. Okay, so next up, let's install some plugins. Now we're gonna start simple with a plugin which comes with all my Zhush called Z. Now Z is really cool because it will allow you to tab between your most recently used folders really quickly. And using Z will be much more quicker than using a terminal on its own. So first we go to our Zhush RC file again. On line 78, we want to go and type in Z. Click save, go back to our terminal. Now, if Z has installed correctly, the terminal will load. If there's been an error, we'll generally see some sort of warning or an issue with the Zhush RC file here. So now, it looks like Z is installed correctly. If we type in Z, we can see that we have three common folders that I've been using. Now, because this is a brand new PC, I have yet to use this PC in anger, but imagine you're using 30 different repos, you're gonna have a load of folders in here. Now, the cool thing about Z, and this is where the time saving comes in, say we want to go to our users folder instead of having to type in mam c users and then you know doing that each time you want to access this folder instead if we just do z r s wow we're there and because z uses a wildcard lookup what it will do is just do a lookup based on the most frequent folders you use so this is a massive time saver when you're using the terminal because you can jump between folders really quickly the next plugin we're going to install is called Zhush Auto Suggestions. Now, Auto Suggestions, as the name sort of implies, is that when you're using the terminal, it will give you auto suggestions to speed up your usage. Now, we go to the install page, go to Oh My Zhush, it's a git clone. So, what we do is clone this git command, go back to our terminal. Again, we go back to our Zhush RC file. In our plugin section, what we want to do is put in Zhush Auto Suggestions. Now, when we open up a new tab, a auto suggestion on my Git clone, maybe if I do a CD, you can see that we've uh, we can CD to our tilde. That is auto suggestion. So the next plugin we're going to install is the Zhush Syntax Highlighting plugin. Again, this is another little trick which is going to make us productivity ninjas. So let's go to the installer. Let's do this git clone. Copy to that. Terminal. Paste it in. And Zhush syntax highlighting. Let's open up our Zhush RC file. Click save. Now when we open our new tab, we should have the plugin installed. So let's do a git and clone. And as you can see, the git is now highlighted. Amazing. And there you have it. We are now productivity ninjas. As you can see that we've installed Ubuntu, we've installed WSL2, we've installed All My Zhush, and we've got a load of cool themes, plugins. If you want to become a legend, and this is the easiest way that someone's going to call you a legend today, hit the subscribe button, hit the like button. I really appreciate it. If you've got any thoughts, comments, please leave them below. If you want some more productivity ninja tips, head over to my website. It's johndjones.com. So there we have it. I hope you found this useful and you enjoyed the content. Happy coding.